Hi, this is Debbie from Soikan. You're watching Trucker Josh with his friend Diesel. Enjoy the show. Madison, Saskatchewan. We're about nine to ten hours from home. We're gonna get home tonight, but we're gonna have to hurry. So I'm glad you're here with me. I'm gonna need some company because this is gonna be it's gonna feel like a long day. As few stops as possible. We can do this. When home's at the end of the day, we have a little bit more motivation, don't we? Let's get it done. Let's get out of here. Get out onto the highway. Looks like everyone else is leaving at the same time as me. Good, that means I'm on a common schedule. Good stuff. Looks like a two roads Turn here. Left. I don't got a stop sign here, I'm gonna stop anyway. Cause that's a road. That's weird. And they got another road over here. No stop sign again. I'm stopping anyway. Turned my signal on a little late there. Whoops. Well, at least there was no one to signal to that time. My bad. 100 meters. Turn left on Trans Canada Highway. Highway 16. Thanks, Karen. See, I'm not perfect either. I make mistakes with my signals and stuff too. I try to remember that when I get frustrated at other people not using not using their signals. Maybe they were just uh, forgetful in that moment. I try to cut people some slack sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and this is the Trans Canada. See here there's a stop sign and at the next side there there's a yield. So at least I know what I'm supposed to do there. If you don't know what you're supposed to do, just stop. This is a yield. I yield to no one. <laughs> okay, let's get out here. Turn into the closest lane. Then move over. All right, homeward bound. Here we come. Regina, Saskatchewan, the capital of, Ros of, of Ruskatchewan, is that what I was going to say? It's Ruskatchewan, Saskatoon and Ruskatchewan. So Saskatoon is a northern city, so if you want to compare it to Alberta, Saskatoon is sort of like the Edmonton of Saskatchewan, and Regina is sort of like the Calgary, except the capitals are reversed. In Alberta, Edmonton's the capital, like we were talking about the other day. And in Saskatchewan, Regina. The southern city is the capital. Correct me if I'm wrong, Saskatchewaner people? Saskatchewanites? Saskatchewanese? You Saskatchewanese? <laughs> oh, we just call you Rider people. Rider Nation. That'll make you happy. Their football team here. It's like American football, but it's Canadian football. It's Continue on 
on this road. Karen, I'm telling a story again. So Canadian football is the CFL. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard me describe it before, are you uh, in the U.S.? Uh, Canadian football is the same as American football, except the football is heavier and bigger, so it's harder to throw. The end zone is bigger, and you only have three downs, not four. I don't know what you guys need four downs for down there. I don't know, if you can't get a touchdown and three downs, I don't know, well, why do you need the extra one, right? So we have three downs, bigger ball, longer end zone. Same thing other than that, for the most part. Uh, the CFL is pretty much the farm league of the NFL. <laughs> Some people get mad if I say that, but you know, it, it's the, the professional football players that couldn't make it in the NFL that come play for the CFL. All right, I'm just that's just my opinion. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm not a big football fan. I don't watch football. Uh, in Manitoba, our team is called the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, and they are the arch nemesis and arch rivals of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, or just the Riders. They, uh, they call themselves Rider Nation, and Saskatchewan is passionate about their riders. Now, you don't come here and diss the riders, okay? And bad things will happen to you. You just come here, you smile, you nod, you got nothing as good to say about the riders, just don't say anything at all. These people are serious here. There's even some of them infiltrating Manitoba. You know who you are. I work with some of you. <laughs> Very passionate about their football. Uh, it's a friendly rivalry. Whenever they play, we call it the Banjo Bowl, I think. But like I said, I don't follow football that much. What was, where was I going with this? I forget where I was going with this, but uh, oh yeah, we'll just call you Rider Nation, Saskatchewan. That'll make them happy. Uh, I totally forgot what I was gonna say after that. Totally got sidetracked there. Um, I'm not in this whole rivalry thing because like I said, I don't follow football. I'm more into hockey. And speaking of hockey, you know what I'm going to say next. You know what, I, what I'm going to say next. Such a shame that Don Cherry was fired. I said it. There you go. You want to know my opinion? I was mad. I'm still mad. I'm sure I'm still going to be mad when this video gets released. He is a legend. He's been broadcasting Coach's Corner and on Hockey Night in Canada for 38 years. Longer than I've been alive. I grew up watching him every Saturday. It's a part of my childhood. And he messed up his words. He meant no bad and everybody knows it. And then his partner, Ron McLean, Ron the Coward McLean, just threw him under the bus the next day. So for from now on, between intermission or in the intermission of Hockey Night in Canada, they got a new show. It's gonna be called Coward's Corner with Ron McLean. So upsetting, so upsetting. The outrage mob got him, they got him. And it, it's so bad, so sad. Because the majority of Canadians loved him. It was just the few people up in their high ivory towers in the big cities of Toronto, they thought he was a little bit uh, controversial. That's what made him so awesome. That's what made it interesting to watch. What's he gonna say today? We don't know. I wonder what, what's going to happen next week on Coach's Corner. Oh, pardon me, Coward's Corner. I don't know what's going to, who the new host is going to be or if uh, McLean's going to do it. I'm being a little hard on McLean here. I know he was just trying to save his job. He was just trying to save his job. Hi. Uh, McLean, if you're watching this by some random chance, disappointed, buddy. Disappointed. Why would he be watching this? I don't know. Somebody knows him. Might share it with him. Look at this. Trucker Josh called you a coward. Sorry, bud. I mean, that was kind of cowardly. I'm sorry. Nothing per. Well, I guess it is personal. You threw your buddy under the bus when you knew he meant no ill. You know he didn't mean anything bad. You could have clarified and defended him just a little bit, but I'm mad right now. I'm so mad. But you know, Don's 85 years old. I'm sure he's ready to retire. It's just so bad, so sad that he didn't get to go out on his own terms, you know? And he went out like this and... <sighs> That's my rant on that. I wasn't even gonna touch that, but there we go. It's out there. It's out there. Now you know my opinion. 
let's get back to trucking. Eh? Well, let's get back to trucking. We're gonna be passing by Balgoni Baloney real soon here. And uh, we're about uh, six hours from our yard in Winnipeg. One more thing though about the whole Don Cherry debacle, whatever you wanna call it, the whole John, Don, Don Cherry thing. And then I won't talk about it anymore because I'm sure those of, there's those of you watching my video that are happy he's gone. I'm sad and I'm mad. But uh, the one thing I really admire is that he did not apologize. He did not apologize. For those of you who weren't watching, but Don Cherry, he's, he's a patriot, a Canadian patriot, and he's done more than a lot of media personalities and broadcasters for our military. And uh, during what we call Remembrance Day, it's a Veterans Day, just like you guys have in the States, it's on the same day, it's our Veterans Day. In Canada, we wear poppies to remember our fallen soldiers. I got my poppy right up here, 365 days a year. It's always with me. You always remember why we have such a great life here in Canada. Why we have the freedoms. Why I can drive my truck from coast to coast and not have to worry about anything, really. We have really no worries. But anyways, he, he's big into honoring the troops, okay? And so am I. So I understand what he was trying to say. What he was saying is that in these big progressive cities that we have in Canada, these big cities like Toronto, you go into the inner city and you don't see a lot of people honoring the soldiers. And you actually see a lot of hatred towards our soldiers in some areas. So Don, like myself and any other patriot who walks into an area like this, did what we all would do. We would say, why aren't you honoring the troops? Like, hey, maybe you should wear a poppy, you know? Someone died so you could be walking these streets safely right now. Someone died so that you could be as wealthy as you are or live in a wealthy country like this. Somebody gave their life and paid the ultimate sacrifice so you could live in the way you live today and, you know, not speak Nazi German? I don't know. Because you know they wouldn't have stopped in Europe. They would have come over here eventually too. And who knows, we could have been living under a fascist Nazi government for the past 60 years instead of living in the freedoms that we have today. And so we wear our poppies to remember the people who died to stop that movement. I mean, nowadays you talk to people, they don't even know what a Nazi is, but that's a different topic altogether. So Don said, you know what? The least you could do is spend a couple of bucks into a poppy and celebrate, well not celebrate, remember this tradition. Rem take part in this tradition with us. Remember them. Everybody. And you know, they took his words and they did what they did, right? They do what they do. They did what they always do. They take it out of context, they twist it. Oh, we know what he meant better than he did. Oh, he meant this, he meant, th oh, oh no, he's a racist. Like, come on, guys. You know what he meant. He's an 85 year old guy. You know what he meant. So on Remembrance Day, they fired him for standing up for our soldiers. On Remembrance Day, that's why Canadians are mad. He was doing what any one of us would have done and everyone understood what he meant. He's an 85 year old guy, he bumbles up his words sometimes. But he's done more for our country than a lot of these people whining and complaining. Oh, I'm just so mad. Anyway, that's the whole story. <laughs> they fired him after 38 years, just like that. But hey, they re-elected a guy who wears blackface more times than he can remember. So that's okay, that's okay. Re-elect that guy, but this guy over here, fire him. Oh, mad. So afterwards, you know, the outrage mob kept going after him, going after him, going after him, demanding an apology. No apology from that patriot. Respect. Don't apologize to the outrage mob. Never apologize to the outrage mob. That's never going to be enough. That's never going to satisfy them. They're just going to use that as a weapon against you. See, he admitted he was wrong. We were right. No, you were wrong. He was right. He's not going to apologize. So much respect for that. What a patriot. That's my rant. Sticking to it. No 
apologies. Just like Dawn. So, on another note, now we're in Saskatchewan now, and like I've said before, Saskatchewan doesn't participate in daylight savings time. So, because of that, they never change their clocks, which I think is genius. That is so awesome. Never having to change your clocks, never having all this confusion twice a year. Saskatchewan, you're doing it right. So, we're in central time zone now, but in summertime, they're in mountain time zone, which is one time zone west of me. So right now, we're in the same time zone as my home in Manitoba. So, the way I remember that is, because I travel through here all the time, I used to always forget, where are they? Are they with Alberta or are they with Manitoba? This is the way you remember what time it is in Saskatchewan, okay? If you're from Manitoba, this is how I do it. During springtime, the flowers start popping out, the grass starts growing, the snow melts, it starts to get nice outside. Saskatchewan springs away from Manitoba to go hang out with Alberta for the summertime, you know? They go to the beach, they go mountain climbing, they, they, they all hang out together all summer. But in wintertime, there's not as many people in Manitoba and it gets really cold. So Saskatchewan's a nice neighbor and they fall back to Manitoba for wintertime to help keep us warm in, three kilometers, in Manitoba. Turn left on, Trans Canada you like my story, Karen? Like, this is how I remember it. So in fall time, Saskatchewan falls back to be with Manitoba to help keep us warm. Summertime, they, or springtime, they spring away from us to go hang out with their fun cousin on the other side, Alberta. That's how you know what time you're in without looking at the clock. Nowadays, all clocks change on their own mostly, right? Like, all the clocks I own, they all change on their own, except for the ones you hang on the wall and stuff, right? But those are even becoming old school. Did they fix these railway tracks yet? Am I going to lose a tire here? Let's slow her down. Slow her down, Trucker Josh. Slow her down. This is going to be... Gonna... No, nope, they fixed it. Okay, good. Oh, that was beautiful. It's still a little bumpy, but way better than it was. you got to be careful. Some of these railway crossings that you go over in, in, in Canada sometimes, uh, wow, like, you're going to bend your rims. You're not just going to blow your tire. You're going to blow your tire. going to go right down to your rim and bend your rim up. <laughs> They're bad. In one kilometer, turn left on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 1. Karen, you know that that's not what you got to do because they got roundabouts here now because they're all fancy and stuff in Saskatchewan. So you don't turn left, you actually turn right and then you go left. But it's actually a right turn, but we're going left. So I get what you mean. We're going left. We're not turning left though. Roundabouts. You know, there's new lights coming up around our area at home too. And, uh, you know, I follow our local news online and on Facebook uh, around my area. And uh, they always announce, you know, oh, new lights coming to this intersection. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, great, more stop and go traffic. And other times I'm like, oh, that would actually help and make sense. You wait there, Mr. Green Man. I got the, I got the green light here. Me first. So, uh, yeah, there's there this one time where I thought, you know, these lights here, they actually make sense, you know? A lot of traffic, accidents happen there all the time. It's hard to get across with the semi. Yeah, sure, put up some lights, that'll help. Meters, turn left on Trans Canada Highway, Highway 1. No, I'm gonna go around these dumb roundabouts first. Which way are you going? Which way are you going? You're going that way? Okay, I'm going this way. See, I always use my signal when I'm signaling out. So here I'll put my right signal on because I'm leaving the roundabout to the right here. That way the people at other parts of the roundabout know exactly where I'm going, right? Watch this, we'll do it again at this roundabout. Pay attention, children. I haven't even had my coffee yet, have I? No, I had a coffee this morning, that's right. I need another coffee. I don't wanna stop though, I wanna go home. Okay, so here we enter the roundabout. Don't put your signal on because you put your right signal on here, people think you're gonna exit at this next exit here, right? Even though you can't. So here I'm turning my left turn signal on because I'm going to stay in the roundabout. Not turning here, I'm going left. Going left, and once I pass that intersection, I turn my right signal on because I'm leaving the circle to the right at the next exit. You see what I did there? You probably couldn't see it because I know you can't see my signals right now, but I mean, you can visualize it, right? I don't know. Is that the right way to do it? That's the way I do it. Does that make sense? Roundabouts don't make sense. And so we got, uh, you know, just under six hours. Straight down this road. Do any of you pull these pikes? 
Is it hard to hook them up? Well, this one's not. This one has those sliding axles in the center. That would be super easy to hook up. I mean, a lot of the pikes, they have that like little, uh, uh, shoot, what you call it, behind it, that, that little tiny dolly thing. Shoot, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> you know what I mean. So what do you, how does it work? Do you hook that thing up to the trailer first, or do you hook it up to the trailer in front first and then hook the one of the, because you can't really back up with that thing back there, can you? I've never actually seen them hook up. All oh, the Christmas lights in town are turned on. We noticed that they had hung them up already before Remembrance Day. They didn't turn them on until the Tuesday evening after Remembrance Day though, so that, that was nice. Main Street always looks more colorful. I wish that they would uh, light up these trees in the center too. I think that would look really cool. They always just do the ones on the side and you know, it's a lot of work already. And each individual tree along Main Street has its own little plug-in, right? It's all underground. So they'd have to, you know, install all the plugs and stuff for these trees in the center here on the left. But I think it'd be super cool. Maybe one day, maybe one day they'll do that. I have to spend some more time this weekend hanging up Christmas lights. We didn't get nearly finished last weekend, so I'm hoping to get everything finished this week because uh, I'm not going to be home. Well, I guess I'm trying to get home for the next weekend. But uh, I don't know if I'll make it or have time to do anything more. So I'm, I'm going to try to get everything done. we got to get the, the rest of those red and green lights all the way around our, uh, our house and then all the way around the garage and then see what we have left yet. We have a bunch of other lights we want to hang up and maybe wrap around our, our porch, the pillars on the porch and stuff and the banister. We try to go a little bit bigger every year. You know, try to get new stuff every year. But one day when we're old and retired, it'll take us all year just to set up for Christmas. <laughs> Maybe then by that time we'll like won the lottery or something and uh, we're gonna pay someone to do it. <laughs> now that takes all the fun out of it. I'm just gonna retire and do it myself. That'll be my job, getting ready for Christmas. 